What's cracking everyone? Now I get a ton of questions about tampers. What's the best tamper? Which tamper fits what quarter filter? So I figured to do a little video explaining the things that you're looking for when you're buying a tamper and what stuff I use. Now there's a ton of minutia that we could dive into, but it really boils down to three main things and that's feel, size, and base shape. Without a doubt, feel is by far the most important. A tamper needs to be comfortable. A tamper is a relatively simple tool, and there's not one piece of technology that any one tamper has that makes it worth getting if it doesn't feel good when you hold it. Everybody's hands different, different sizes, different shapes, and what feels awesome to you might feel horrible to someone else. So try to get your hands on as many tampers as possible to feel what feels good to you. For example, I like tampers that have really thin pistons. There's some awesome tampers that have much thicker pistons, but they just don't feel right to me. And again, it's not a right or wrong thing. It's about what you prefer the most and what makes you the most comfortable. Now, the next thing you wanna consider is size. So most commercial espresso machines have a 58 millimeter basket. There are a few that use a 54. So a 58 millimeter tamper seems like an obvious choice. But if you use a standard 58 millimeter tamper in a 58 millimeter basket, there's a lot of excess play, i.e. it seems like the tamper's a little bit smaller than it should be. So for this reason, a lot of people get their tampers milled oversized. Now how big you can go with your tamper ultimately depends on what basket you're gonna use. So you can send your basket out to most tamper manufacturers and they can make a tamper that fits your basket perfectly. If you can't do this, the biggest I'd recommend going without sending your basket in is a 58.4. Now if you wanna push the boundaries and go bigger than that, that's totally fine, just be aware of two things. One, you want a basket that fits the tamper. For example, this is a 58.55, so it's really large, but I use it exclusively with a Pullman basket, so it fits perfectly. The other thing you need to be aware of when using really oversized tampers is suction. Now, suction is when you tamp your puck of coffee, pull the tamper out, and if you pull it out too fast, you'll actually suck the whole puck with it or pull the puck out a little bit so that it kind of jumps out of the portafilter and then settles back down. And that's why you start to see these tampers with these weird base designs with little steps on them or grooves cut out of them. And that's an effort to reduce suction. So if you really wanna use an oversized tamper but are having suction problems, you just need to slow down a little bit when you pull the tamper out of the portafilter after you've tamped it. Now some people find this annoying because it keeps them from going as fast as they want to. So if you're cranking hard and just can't slow down but really wanna use a big tamper, Again, I think 58.4 is a good compromise for most people. You get a nice snug fit in the basket, but it's not so large where you're gonna be getting a ton of suction. The last big thing to think about is base shape. Now there's two main base shapes, flat and convex. Flat is exactly what it sounds like, a tamper with a completely flat base. Convex has a round base, it's got this little hump in the middle. Now the convex shape is an attempt to create a better seal between the puck of coffee and the sidewall of the basket. And the most fragile part of the coffee puck is where it meets the sidewall of the basket. If you bump your portafilter on the counter after you've tamped or you hit it on the group head on the way in, it's really easy to open up that seal between the packed coffee puck and the side of the basket. If you break that seal, you'll get a channel. If you don't know what that is, I'll put a link to a video down here that'll explain the whole thing. So with a flat tamper, when you tamp down on the coffee bed, you basically have all the pressure pushing straight down. So you can see how it's really easy to get a good seal on the bottom of the basket, but the sidewall of the basket doesn't really get any love. Enter the convex tamper. And because of its shape, when you tamp with a convex tamper, it pushes a little bit of the coffee out towards the sidewall of the basket, theoretically creating a better seal between the puck and the basket. That's the positive. Now the disadvantage is that you actually have a coffee bed of uneven density. It's slightly thinner in the middle and slightly thicker on the sides. The amount of density discrepancy depends on how convex the tamper is. There's generally two kinds of curves. There's a US curve, which is a really mild curve, and then there's what people call a Euro curve, which is a really aggressive curve. This one's kind of like a Euro curve. It's pretty heavy. So which one's preferable, convex or flat? It honestly comes down to what feels best for you. I use a convex for years, then switch to a flat, then switch back to a convex, and I currently use flat. Aside from how these things feel when I'm holding them in my hand or when I'm physically tamping the coffee bed, there's no appreciable difference in end beverage quality. Some people even make some other shapes. Reg Barber makes a C flat where the bulk of the piston is flat and just the very edges are curved in an attempt to create a best of both worlds. But I really think people are splitting hairs here unless you have an obscenely convex 
convex tamper or a really ridiculous base shape, any tamper when used properly is going to be able to create awesome espresso. Again, there's crazy materials. Some people use really awesome steel, super hard, but any tool that you have, if you take care of it, will last a long time. I've had this tamper for over 10 years. It's not made out of any kind of special stainless or anything like that, and it has not one nick or ding on it. It could probably use a little bit of a polish, but other than that, it's in amazing shape. So if you take care of your tools, they're gonna last no matter what they're made out of. And even though it's a functionally simple tool, it doesn't necessarily mean you wanna buy the cheapest one possible. It's something that you use day in and day out. So aside from feel, and the nicer ones do really feel better in your hand, there's also a little bit of pride of ownership that comes with owning something that's really nice. You should feel good about taking it out of its little bag or wherever you keep it and just having it as something that's really personal to you. So in summation, a tamper is a really simple tool. You don't need to overthink it. As long as you've got a proper size for your basket and you're aware of the implications that some oversized pistons can have on your technique, pretty much the way to go is to get whatever feels best to you. And again, this is a really personal choice. But as far as one tamper being way better than the other one or gonna change your quality of espresso, some measurable amount, it just doesn't work like that. And this is coming from a guy who easily has 15 plus tampers. So that's it. Hopefully this clears up a little bit of misinformation and makes your tamper buying decision just a little bit easier. Let me know what you think. And as always, stay dialed and I will catch you on the flip side. Peace.